Now we're moving to the point where we're trying to make programs more efficient by breaking them into small reusable components. And one way to do that is to move into object-oriented programming. When you are working with objects, you create an object or you instantiate an object only after you have created a class that defines an object. When we're creating our class, in this case I've put it in the same program area, same folder as my main method. So I have a pa I'm in package com Mary Wynn, public class context. You'll notice that we don't have a public static void main here. This class will never do anything on its own. It must be instantiated from another class to work. It's setting up a pattern and it will be used to create objects. Each object can have all of these different variables contact ID, first name, last name, email, phone home, phone work, phone cell. We have a constructor that will initialize all of those variables. And then we have getters and setters to get each or set each individual item, allowing you to change them after they've been constructed. We also have an activity, something that it does. We have print all, which will print a formatted version of the contact information. And so you'll notice we do that with the contact ID, then a new line, then first name, plus a space, plus last name, then a new line for each email and for the phone number. So our main program is going to simply create instances of that contact. So we have contacts person one, equals new contacts and we pass in all of the information that that constructor needs. Then we have a second one, we can create as many as we want, that we have again calling that constructor to create everything. Then we use person one, we use the object name to call print all and then it will know to call all the information from that object. And then I've got a blank line and then set person two dot print all. And when I run this you'll see it prints formatted versions of the different contacts that were created so that it is nicely formatted on the screen. This is very similar to what you're going to be doing for your employee class and instantiating it. You don't need to get input from the user. You'll create three instances and the employee information is different, but it's basically the same setup. You will put a employee class in the same folder as your main class and then you'll call it from main. So it's pretty straightforward. This will let us do all sorts of things where we can really encapsulate our code and use it more efficiently. So this is a sample of how you'd set up that class and then call it from the main.java.